Hello, welcome to Prafun Gorkar Educational Channel. Today in this online lecture, I will discuss with you how to perform routine urine examination in college laboratory as well as in practicing clinical laboratory. Lesson plan is placed on the left hand side and the points are 1. Introduction 2. Instructions given to the patient 3. Information of urine collection bottle 4. All the requirements 5. Standard operation procedure of 3 parts of urine examination and these are A. Physical examination B. Chemical examination and C. Microscopic examination 6. Clinical significance of each test 7. Precautions taken while performing the test 8. Report preparation and 9. Study questions In clinical laboratory practice, you will find practically for every patient routine urine examination is advised by physicians. This is a very simple test which gives idea about several clinical conditions like diabetes mellitus, jaundice, types of jaundice, kidney diseases, kidney stones, types of stones, hereditary problems like amino acid urea that means presence of amino acids in urine etc. Now regarding the instructions given to the patient. Instructions given to the patient are very important otherwise urine sample collected may not be proper for the test. Hence following instructions are very important. 1. Patient should fast for at least 8 hours. 2. Patient should take only life supporting drugs and other drugs which might impart color to the urine and may interfere with urine examination should be avoided. 3. Urine collection bottle should be taken from the laboratory because they will give the patient a proper bottle only. 4. As far as possible, patient should not pass urine during night hours and should avoid drinking excess water during night hours. 5. In the morning, patient should collect midstream urine sample. That means, first initial part of the urine should be discarded and remaining complete urine sample should be collected. 6. Urine quantity should be sufficient for the test unless there is some clinical problem. Urine collection bottle should be of about 300 to 400 ml capacity. It should be clean and dry. Bottle should have wide mouth so that urine collection becomes easy. After receiving urine bottle from the patient, it should be labeled immediately as shown here with a label which will indicate the name of the patient, identification number, date and time of collection, type, type of collection, in this case it is fasting. The physician's name also should be written and the label should be affixed to the side of the bottle and never on the lid. Now we will discuss about the first part of routine urine examination that is physical examination. For that following points are considered volume, color, appearance, sediment formation, odor, reaction, pH and specific gravity. Following are the requirements. Measuring cylinder, funnel, pH paper or litmus paper and specific gravity meter. Procedure is like this. First measure volume of urine using a funnel and measuring cylinder and note volume of urine. Then note color. Uh, for example, in this case uh, it is pale yellow and in this case it is yellow. 3. Note appearance of urine. For example, the appearance of urine on the left hand side is clear and besides that on the right hand side urine is cloudy or turbid. 4. Just smell urine and get familiar with normal odor 
so that if any change is there in the order, just note it down. 5. After placing urine on table, observe again after 1 hour and see at the bottom if sediment has formed as shown on the left hand side. 6. First check reaction of urine using a litmus paper and see whether it is acidic or alkaline or if a urine strip is available then check pH of urine by using a urine strip. And lastly use a specific gravity meter to note specific gravity of urine as shown on the left hand side and note the reading. You can also determine specific gravity of urine by using urine strip. Just dip urine strip for few seconds in urine, take out and read specific gravity as shown on the left hand side. Now I will give you information of clinical significance of physical examination. First, volume. Volume of a normal, normal individual's first midstream urine is about 60 to 300 ml. Volume more than 500 ml indicates polyuria and it may be observed most commonly in diabetes mellitus and also sometimes in diabetes insipidus. Volume less than 20 ml indicates oliguria and total suppression of urine means anuria due to renal disease and also due to enlarged prostate. Then regarding the color, usually normal urine color is pale yellow. Yellow color indicates that person may be suffering from jaundice. Red color indicates presence of blood in urine. Then turbid urine indicates presence of amorphous phosphate or and protein and cells in urine. Blood, cells and protein pass in urine in glomerular damage. Then reaction and pH. Usually pH of freshly collected morning urine is acidic and alkaline urine indicates bacterial infection and it is very important to note here that it is necessary to determine pH of urine within 30 minutes of collection Otherwise, even after storage at room temperature, due to microbial growth also, the nature of urine, that means the reaction can be alkaline. Then about odor. Odor of urine uh, usually is normal, but it changes, it becomes fruity if ketone bodies are present in urine due to uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. And Foul smell is observed because of urinary tract infection. Then regarding the sediment. Presence of sediment indicates presence of amorphous phosphates and also due to blood cells and urinary tract cells in urine. Regarding specific gravity, normal specific gravity is 1.015 to 1.030. Decrease in specific gravity indicates chronic renal disease or diabetes insipidus and increase in specific gravity indicates presence of large amount of solutes like glucose in uh, as it is seen in diabetes mellitus. Now let us discuss about chemical examination of urine. For chemical examination, these are all the substances determined in urine sugar, protein, ketone bodies, bile pigments, bile salts, urogranogen and opal blood. In the case of a normal urine sample, all these substances except urogranogen are absent and urogranogen also present in normal quantity which may not be detected by chemical methods and abnormal findings are like this that if sugar is present that indicates diabetes mellitus 
if proteins are present in high concentration then the indication is of renal disease then if ketone bodies are present in urine these indicate uncontrolled diabetes mellitus bile pigments present in urine indicate jaundice bile salts present in urine indicate jaundice then urobilirubin in high concentration is indication of hemolytic jaundice and if occult blood is present then it may be due to renal disease or urinary tract infection these are all the requirements for urine chemical examination test tubes small size and medium size centrifuge tubes beakers of 500 ml graduated pipettes pasture pipettes test tube rack and centrifuge and reagents benedict reagent for sugar determination sulfosalicylic acid for protein determination rothera powder for ketone body determination along with ammonium hydroxide and husserl reagent for bile pigment determination sulfur powder for bile salt determination and early reagent for urobilirubin determination benedict test is performed like this first take 5 ml of benedict reagent in a bigger size test tube then add urine 8 drops or 0.5 ml mix well and boil for 2 to 3 minutes cool and observe color if there is no change in blue color that means sugar is absent if color changes that will indicate presence of sugar and the principle is any reducing substance will reduce cupric oxide present in benedict reagent to cuprous oxide and that's how you are able to see the various colors but there is no guarantee that it will indicate only glucose hence to confirm presence of glucose it is necessary to use a urine strip that will only give idea about presence of glucose for a urine protein test if urine is clear transfer urine to a clean and dry test tube if urine is not clear then centrifuge it for 10 minutes at 3000 rpm and transfer supernatant means upper part of urine to a test tube on the top of this urine then add 2 to 3 drops of sulfosalicylic acid reagent and observe upper top portion of urine if proteins are present these get denatured due to sulfosalicylic acid and precipitate out no appearance of precipitate means urine protein test is negative for urine ketone body test transfer urine in a test tube and add ketone body test mixture mix and then gently add ammonium hydroxide reagent from the test tube sides if ketone body is present then acetone from it reacts with sodium nitroproside from the test mixture and presence of purple ring at the top indicates test is positive for ketone bodies no appearance of purple ring means ketone body test is negative for the determination of bile pigments and urobilinogen place 3 to 4 ml of urine in a centrifuge tube that means about 1/3 full by using a pasture pipette then add equal amount of 10% barium chloride solution and mix it well. when barium chloride is added it will react with the sulfates in the urine and precipitate will form now centrifuge at 1500 rpm for 10 minutes or filter by using batman number no. 1 filter paper then after centrifugation place supernatant in another test tube for urobilirubin test then add 1 to 2 drops of fuchsia reagent to the sediment if bile pigments are present 
then bilirubin from that reacts with Fuchs reagent and it gets converted to green colored biliverdin and if there is no development of green color that means bile pigments are absent now for the determination of urobilinogen to the supernatant add 2 to 3 drops of early reagent and observe the color if color changes to pink that means urobilinogen is present and development of dark pink color means increased amount of urobilinogen in urine then for the determination of bile salts plus about 10 ml of urine in a medium size test tube and sprinkle small amount of dry sulfur powder on the surface of urine and observe the sulfur particles if bile salts are present in urine then they will reduce the surface tension of uh, urine and sulfur particles will start settling at the bottom and if bile salts are absent then sulfur powders will not settle at the bottom they will remain floating on the surface only for the determination of occult blood place pinch of benzedine powder in a test tube and add 2 to 3 drops of glycyl acetic acid and mix well then add about 2 ml of hydrogen peroxide solution and mix well again from this transfer 1 ml of supernatant to a test tube labeled as t to it add 0.5 ml of urine and mix well and observe the change in color if color changes to blue that means occult blood is present and no change in color that means no development of blue color means occult blood is absent and here the reaction is the peroxidase activity of hemoglobin decomposes hydrogen peroxide and liberated oxygen oxidizes benzene to form green color complex urine chemical examination can also be performed by using urine strips in 2 to 3 minutes although this strips are expensive the method is very safe does not require corrosive reagents and it is specific and sensitive and also does not require centrifuged urine multistrip reagent strips are clear plastic strips different reagent areas are fixed on the strip and these different cellulose areas contain specific testing chemicals according to the test the various determinations possible uh, more common by multistrip reagent strip are 1 ph 2 protein 3 glucose 4 ketones 5 bilirubin 6 Occult blood and seven urobilinogen. And procedure for the test is like this: take a urine strip and dip it in urine for few seconds. Take it out and compare the color with the color chart on the strip bottle. Change in color for a specific test means test is positive, and no change in color means test is negative. Now let us discuss the principles involved in the various tests. For protein determination, the test area is impregnated with tetrabromophenol blue buffer to an acidic pH, and this area is yellow in the absence of protein. But if proteins are present in urine, these proteins react with tetrabromophenol blue, and color changes. to various shades of green to blue according to the concentration of proteins then for the determination of glucose the test area is impregnated with glucose oxidase peroxidase and the chromogen potassium iodide if glucose is present in urine glucose oxidase acts on it and the reaction is like this glucose is converted to gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide Then on hydrogen peroxide, peroxide is acts and 
water molecules and oxygen forms and this oxygen oxidizes potassium iodide dichromogen and color changes from sky blue to green to chocolate brown depending upon the concentration of glucose in urine and the method is highly specific only for glucose for the determination of ketones the reaction area contains sodium nitroxide glycine and a buffer the sodium nitroxide reacts with diacetic acid and acetone in alkaline medium to form violet dye complex then for determination of bilirubin the reaction area contains 2,4 dichloro aniline diazonium salt if bilirubin is present in urine that means by pigment it will couple with the diazonium salt and color changes from buff to various shades of tan or tannish purple as shown in the figure then for the determination of urobilinogen the principle is reaction area contains paradimethyl amino benzaldehyde which reacts with urobilinogen in strong acidic medium to produce a color change from brown to orange for the determination of upper blood the procedure is based on the peroxidase activity of hemoglobin present in blood which catalyzes the oxidation of an indicator such as tetramethyl benzidine and the color changes from orange to green to dark blue then for the determination of pH two indicators are used methyl red pH range 4.4 to 6.2 and color change red to yellow and bromothymol blue pH range 8.0 to 9.6 and color change from yellow to blue when the test strip is dipped in urine the color of the reaction area changes from orange to yellow and green to blue depending upon the pH of urine for specific gravity the reaction area contains pre-treated polyelectrolytes and bromothymol blue and when the strip is dipped in urine depending upon the concentration of ions in the urine which indicate a higher specific gravity the polyelectrolytes dissociate and then the bromophenol blue changes the color and higher the specific gravity of the urine specimen more acidic is the reagent area and the color of the reagent area ranges from deep blue green to yellow orange for higher ionic concentrations now we will discuss about microscopic examination of urine the microscopic examination is a valuable diagnostic tool for the detection and evaluation of renal and urinary tract disorders and other systemic diseases the microscopic elements present in urine are collected in the form of deposit by centrifugation and a small drop of the sediment is examined by making a cover slip preparation under microscope the requirements are as follows centrifuge tubes glass slides cover slips pasture pipettes centrifuge and microscope and freshly voided midstream morning urine specimen and procedure is like this mix the urine and pour into a centrifuge tube until it is 3/4 full centrifuge with another balanced test tube for 5 minutes at 2500 revolutions per minute pour off the supernatant quickly and completely into another test tube then resuspend the deposit by shaking the tube and place one drop of the deposit on a glass slide cover it with cover slip and mark it with the identification number then observe it first under low power objective in reduced light and this is obtained by partially closing the iris diaphragm and then adjusting the condenser downwards until 
satisfactory contrast is obtained and note the various contents of the various fields as shown now uh, in the various pictures here now let us see what various things you may see and identify in during microscopic examination first we will consider normal urine sample in normal urine occasional pus cells means wbcs epithelial cells and few crystals may be seen and depending upon consumption of food amount of crystals may be more uh, in urine however in urinary tract infection you may see following materials in large number and note this for high power fit one pus cells two epithelial cells three various types of cast like granular cast hyaline cast waxy cast rbc cast etc and you also may see large number of red blood cells then in the case of renal calculus or calculi you may see large number of these crystals calcium oxalate uric acid crystals and amorphous phosphates learn to differentiate squamous epithelial cells and transitional epithelial cells as shown on the left hand side and bacteria may also be seen in urinary tract infection or if urine is stored at room temperature for very long period and then prepare a report of routine urine examination as as shown on the left hand side well we have considered all these points for this online lecture on routine urine examination and now solve related mcqs on our youtube channel as as shown on the left hand side and refer to our books for more information on this topic and subscribe and share our youtube channel by hitting bell button next time i will get you another online lecture on a new topic till then bye bye